do you guys have this? Do you have any of this? Uh, I have one. Okay. Well, uh, on the page, it doesn't have a number. On the back, it's got the clothes, okay? Now, I'm going to go through this real quick just so you see what it's like. And, uh... You can sit here if you want to. No, I'm fine over here. Whatever. Okay. I'm going to show you what this looks like, and then I'll explain a couple things that are important about the clothes, right? So, uh, things that you're going to, that I would have when I'm doing this, this, this happens after I tell them how much the books cost, okay? So, um, you know, Ms. Jones, like, instead of being, uh, 12, 1300 bucks, like a set of encyclopedias, the whole thing is just 499. That's not bad. Okay. So I told them the price and I would have my order pad with me and I'd go right in the clothes. I'd say, well, cool. What everyone likes about the way I do business is that I just do the orders today and then I deliver the books at the end of the summer. And so that way, you guys would have the rest of the summer to save up the balance. That'd make it easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. Cool. The other thing everyone likes is that I actually come back and deliver the books myself. So that way I can sit down with you and the kids and show you how they work. That'd be cool? Yeah, that'd be great. Cool. Um, what I do is I send you a postcard like this, and I have a green postcard. I'll show you a green postcard about a week in advance that lets you know the exact day that I'll be delivering yours so I can deliver yours at the same time as I do, like, uh, Christopher Wallace's and, and Matt's. Would that be cool? Yeah, cool. Well, in order to get that postcard stuff going, I just get your address. Do you get your mail here at the post office? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. What's the address? Uh, it's uh, 7841. Okay. And that's an order pad that I have, all right? That's the clothes. Now, they've changed a little bit this year. Uh, I've used the same, we'll talk about this in a minute, the same word-for-word -word clothes every summer for the last four summers. I've learned a whole lot about selling, but one thing I've learned is that I, I use the same clothes every time, no matter what. Right. So, what are y'all's thoughts on closing? Like, what do you think of when you think of closing a bomb on books? It's important to like figure out what y'all think it is, so I can explain how this is different. Like a really accomplished feeling, like really with a lot of satisfaction. Okay. Like having accomplished. Okay. What else? No. What do you think about when you think of closing someone? Um. You just really like the final sale on everything. Like you got to make them feel like it's a great decision they're making, and just just bring them to that point of decision, like we were talking about. I guess. Yeah. You know. The, the close is not the point at which you get them to buy. That's not what the close is. The close is where you just bring them to a decision. Okay. Um, the vast majority of people you meet this summer are not going to buy from you, no matter what. Vast majority. Um, and about half the people about a third or a half the people you sit down with are going to buy from you. Okay, so in any case you're looking at like like 7 out of 10 or 5 out of 10 saying no when you're sitting down with them after going through the whole thing. Okay, so one big thing that's really important about the close is being willing to fail. Okay, most people are not going to buy. Be willing to fail. Be okay. Like, there's a very, it's, it's kind of hard to put this into words, but there's a difference between like Oh, okay, you don't want them, okay, never mind. And versus, it's okay if they don't buy, all right? If you can grasp that distinction, it makes the job a lot more fun. So being willing to fail. The, the, another thing about the close is that it's really assumptive, all right? At no point in the close do we say, so do you want them? Are you going you gonna to buy them or, you know, should I get them? You know, it's not like that, right? It's whatever I likes about the way I do business is I do the orders today, then I bring them back in August. That'd make it easier, wouldn't it? Yeah, another thing that's so cool is that I, I deliver myself so I can sit down with you and the kids and show you how they work. Would that be cool? Sweet. I'll send you a postcard that lets you know when I'm coming back. In order to send the card, I'll just get y'all's address. What's the, what did y'all get your mail here at the post office? All right? It's assumptive. Uh, another thing that goes right along with being assumptive, most things that require being assumptive are also really awkward. All right? All right? If you are not very uncomfortable in the first couple weeks, at this point in the cycle of the sale, uh, you're you're probably not doing it right. All right, it's very awkward at first because you're sitting in somebody's living room, just showing a books that cost 500 bucks, and you're going, "Cool, I'll send you a postcard. What uh, what's y'all's address? Do you get your mail here? I'll send you a card." And it's awkward. It's awkward. All right. And when something's awkward, what do people tend to do with it? Find excuses. You know, make something. They, they find a way not to do it, okay? If it's awkward to do something, people will find ways not to do it. Uh, like, they'll rationalize not doing it. Well, she wasn't going to buy. She wasn't interested, you know? I, why would I close her? She wasn't going to buy. She told me her kids wouldn't use them. 
okay? Stuff like that. Another point on closing, this isn't in any particular order, is that I close every single mom. Every single mom gets closed in that exact same way. I don't care if she's sitting there with her kids running around with no clothes on, then she's telling me that her kids never use the books and she can't afford them. I, I close every single mom. Like, cool, yeah. Uh, you probably can't afford Okay, great. Yeah, what everyone likes is that I, I actually do the orders today and then I deliver them in August so you can split up the balance. That would probably make it easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. yeah, and then another thing that's cool is I deliver myself so I can sit down with you and the kids and show you exactly how they work. Would that be okay? All right, and if you understand that first part of being willing to fail, why would you not close everybody? If you close everybody in the same way this summer like that, you'll get 50 to 100 customers that you never would have thought would have buy books. You because they just at some point just give in. Just no, it's not. It's not even that they give in. It's just that so they many don't people. Try. Yeah. It's, they it's don't, so. Yeah. How how many girls? How many girls would you go home with on an average Friday night if you closed assumptively every time? You know, <laughs> like right. girls want to go home with guys. Like they do. They're just waiting to be closed, <laughs> and people don't close. All right. There are people out there that aren't like salivating waiting to buy books, but the people that are there that there will buy books from you. But they just need to be brought to a decision, and they're not going to be like. Hey, uh, CJ, real quick, do you have anything else I could buy from you? And like, you know, so how does this work? Do I mail you a check? Like, they're not going to do that. All right? You got to be assumptive and close these people. The worst thing that happens is if they don't buy, and it's not the end of the world. Most people are not going to buy from you. <laughs> but if you close like that every single time, that that number gets a lot smaller and more people are going to buy. And it makes the job fun. I could talk for a lot longer on closing. There's a lot of different things to it. There's ways to set up the close. There's ways to answer objections. But as for now, the important things are, you know, I, I, I do it word for word. I close every single mom, and I'm really assumptive. I say, you know, do you guys get your mail here at the post office? And I put my pen down, and I wait until she says something. And I just wait. <laughs> Sometimes I have to wait a long time. But no longer than 20 minutes. You know? She, she might say, uh, we get at the post office. I might fill it out. Okay, or she might say, well, uh, we didn't say we wanted them. Or, and I'd say, okay, cool, and I'll go back into it, and I'll answer objections. We'll teach you about that later. Okay, she might say, wow, I'll say, send you a postcard so you know when I'm delivering your books. Come on, what's your address? And just joke around, okay? I close every single mom of like that. All right. So sometimes she'll just be like, well, I, I kind of don't have the money, so yeah. what's your address? Yeah, like that, I'll, exactly? I mean, she's like, just, I don't, just don't even look at it, look down. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a dickhead about it, you know, but if she's like, I don't have the money, it's like, uh, it depends on what point she says that. Um, if she's just like, you know, I just, if I'm like, the whole thing's 500 bucks, and she's like, I just don't think we could afford it, I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever it likes, and I'll just go into it. If she's like really not with my presentation, and she doesn't seem like she's going to buy it, I'm going to close her quickly, I'm going to get out, I'm going to get on to the next mom, but I'm at least going to give her and me a chance for her to buy books. So you won't just like go into, say that's your address, so try to like at least say, no, well, it's not, I, I've never tricked anyone to buy books, but I am going to give everybody the chance to buy books, and that's what the close is.